Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today's video is about my top four altcoins. And you may wonder why four? Typically see top five, top 10. There is a top five. The first one is gonna be obvious if you watch the channel and then I have four altcoins that will follow. And this is how I'm planning out my investment strategy for the end of the year and quite possibly until next year, until the bull market starts and it's in full force. These are the top five projects that I'll be getting into. So guys, if you like the video, please hit the like button. It means a lot to me. And if you want to see more of my content, subscribe to the channel. So let's get into it. And let's take a look at my top five projects here. Let me know what you think. All right. So if we're going into uh, coin market cap currently, we see coin market cap currently the fear and greed index. Today's not a good day. We're at 49, tick down a little bit. Uh, the top mover for today was C. Never even heard of this, but it's apparently it's an L1. Um, I may take a look at this later, but right now we're focusing on the top five. Um, I always say less is more. Instead of spreading my, you know, my uh, earnings and, and my investments out from 10, 15 coins, I want to focus on five and five and go heavy on them, have a lot of tokens. And if they're five promising projects, I think that my portfolio will do well next year and 2025. So Bitcoin's at number one. Bitcoin surprisingly went under 29,000. It stands at 28,814, which is a good, good, good time to DCA. And since we're talking about Bitcoin, let's get right into it. This is one of my first coins. So Bitcoin, I treat Bitcoin as a 401k. I also have a 401k with my employer. And let me tell you, I think Bitcoin is outperforming what I have in my 401k. Uh, Bitcoin is a safe one. Um, right now, it's the only one, as far as the U.S. goes, they're not declaring, declaring that as a security. Um, we have spot ETFs coming up, so we'll see what happens with that. But some of the other factors as to why I invest in Bitcoin is because it's deflationary. You know, we see everything going on with the world economy. And if you watch the channel, you'll know that I'm not a tech, I'm, a, I'm not a tech guy. I'm not a, um, I shouldn't say tech guy. I'm not a charts guy. Um, I'm more of a macro economics type person. I look at current events, look at world events and see how that impacts the economy and my investments. But Bitcoin, if you look at it and look at the world in total, China right now, this article here is saying that they're hiding key data to pretend its economy is doing OK. But a lot of reports are right now they're in a deflationary mode. Deflationary mode is where your economy is just not growing and people aren't buying. They're holding on to their money. And in order to, you know, try to get people to spend money and to spur up the economy. What they do is they start cutting rates. And then after they start cutting rates, they start printing more money, printing more money. What's that going to do? Deflate the value of your dollar, in this case, yen. So that's one thing, right? And then if we look over here in the U.S., if we look at the current U.S. national debt, currently stands at $32 trillion. Not billion, I said trillion, right? And the debt is just ballooning out of control. Um, at some point, you know, we're going to pivot next year and they're going to cut rates again. And then the printer has to come on. Um, there's no way we can service all this debt without printing more money. And when that happens, the value of the dollar will decrease. And we've already seen it. You know, things we used to buy five years ago for a certain price, even if you look at something as simple as McDonald's, um, you know, a Big Mac used to cost whatever it was. And now it's almost 50 percent more. That's just, you know, just everyday things that you see. Everything's more much that much more expensive. And Bitcoin, since its inception, has gone up. Trajectory is up. So when I invest in Bitcoin, I think it's the safest crypto out there for me. And I know that it, whatever, let's say I put $100 in it today, that I know five years from now, that $100 is going to be a lot more. Versus me putting $100 maybe, you know, under my couch, having it in a safe somewhere. What would that $100, the purchasing power of that be in five years versus Bitcoin? To me, the, you know, the, the answer is pretty clear. So Bitcoin for me is the safest and that's my number one investment. I made another video just saying that for the month of August, I will be DCAing primarily into Bitcoin. Come September, we're going to start talking about these other coins that uh, we're going to list here later. Um, so Bitcoin is, is taking off. You see the new addresses um, and the new addresses here will be what you see highlighted in orange and you just see trajectories going up. It's going up. People are taking notice and they're recognizing they don't want to be left behind. This is a very, very scarce asset. And I think the sky's the limit. You know, if you can get a little bit, just get some and forget about it. Like I said, I treat it as a 401k. The next one is going to be ETH. 
again, I know it's probably boring. It's not the old coins that you guys probably want to hear about. But again, I'm in for it. You know, I want to be safe. I want to do um, invest in things that I know that come times when it switches and we are in the bull market full force 2024, 2025, that I'm getting a minimum 5% or 5x on my um, on my investments. And ETH right now, you can't talk um, smart contract L1 without talking about ETH. Um, it's deflationary now. It's burning. Um, you know, it, it's everything runs on ETH. DeFi pretty much is ETH, runs on ETH. It's the big one. NFTs, everything, you name it, it's on ETH. Um, and the price right now is currently standing at 1807. Um, and it's been pretty steady. You know, I've never seen, I've seen ETH go up to almost 2000, 1900, but it's been pretty much at that 1800 mark within the 1800s for throughout this bull market or bear market rather. So it's a pretty steady thing. Um, and if you look at the price history here, um, so we look at the peak, it was up to four grand, I want to say. Yeah, four grand, 4,100. Now it's back down to 1,800. You know, with everything that's going on with crypto, and I believe that the uh, market cap is definitely going to increase. I could see ETH going up to 10, 15,000. At least that's what the predictions are. So it's another safe one. Um, everything pretty much runs on ETH. All these other L1s, they're trying to be interoperable with them. You have EVM. A lot of different chains want to compete or um, communicate with Ethereum. It's just a, a winner to me. If we look at DeFi, you see that ETH currently stands at number one. Number one. Number two is Tron, but that's, you know, Justin Sun. We don't talk about him or anything that he touches. But other than that, you have Arbitrum, Polygon, Optimism, and these are the L2s that run on top of ETH. So ETH is the big dog. And if you look at the TVL, 23.8 billion. 23.8 billion. The next L1 that's even, you know, somewhat close to that, that's not ETH related, would be Avalanche. And then after that, Solana. So ETH, a lot of good things. And then I talked about the burning. Look at this. You see that? The ETH supply this is going down, not going up. So, so far this year, ETH, 817,000 ETH has been burned. 817,000. So deflationary. And, you know, when ETH went up to 4,000 last bull cycle, it wasn't deflationary like it is now. So, like I said, this is another one where I consider it's like a 401k investment it's safe and i know that i'm going to get some returns not going anywhere so I, I truly believe in eth that's my number two and then on eth the news keeps coming now there's some future etfs going out for eth um so all the news is about bitcoin and their spot etfs but there's future etfs coming out for ethereum after that gets approved when it gets approved you know what's going to follow it's going to be spot etf as well and then institutional money coming into eth all good things for eth um, some of the players that are coming in that want to come up with this uh, future ETF, you have um, Ether Strategy ETF, you have uh, Bitwise, you have Roundhill, uh, Van Eck, Valkyrie just got into it. So the list goes on, and I just think sky's the limit for ETH. Like it. Next one is Solana. Now, Solana, Solana. I may get some hate for this one because a lot of people. They say Solana's always broken and yada da yada da and all of this, but Solana's not to be. Um, you can't play with it, you know. After the whole FTX debacle and people saying that SBF and FTX was propping Solana up, and that may be partly true, but after that, people left it for dead. People saying that hey, that's happening. On top of that, keep stalling out every other day or every other month, but it's still here and the volume is still there. It's fast. And if anything, I would say this and the other coin that I'm going to talk about, other project I'm going to talk about, probably ETH's biggest competitors. And so I believe in ETH, but I'm also going to hedge ETH and think that there might be something out there that's cheaper and faster and has the adoption and has the usage that can compete with ETH. And that is Solana to me. That's one of the players. So currently it went up. It was up at $24 down to $22, but I am be accumulating this for sure. And if here you look at the just the price action for Solana, um, you see here at the peak is over 200 bucks, 248 to be exact. FTX happened and it got down to eight dollars at one point. Right now, steady over twenty dollars. Um, Solana, I'm telling you, is going to be a force to be reckoned with, even if it doesn't make its all time high. It's going to get up to at least five X, in my opinion. You know, that's a hundred something dollars at, at minimum. I think that's what's going to happen with it. Why do I feel that way? Well, 
If you look at the daily active addresses on Solana and compare them to other L1s, Solana's up there as far as top five. So if we look at just in August, 400, oh, I'm sorry, that's Polygon. Uh, let's get into Solana here. Da, 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 da. So again, look at Solana. So Solana is up 264,000. Um, and then 274,000 for the month of August, there are around 200, over 250,000 daily active addresses. Now, if we look at daily transactions for the month of August, you see Solana is at 15 million, 16 million. So, you know, that's pretty active. Um, you know, during a bear market, there are over 10 million in daily transactions. That's something you want to take a look at. Um, it just goes to show that it's not a dead chain, not a dead chain at all. Not only that, then if we look at NFTs, look at the chain that's right under Ethereum. That's Solana. They have a growing NFT um, ecosystem, and the marketplace is booming right now. As far as sales goes, right under ETH, if you look at the total sales right there versus ETH, I mean, it's right there, right under it. So you have a fast chain, cheaper than Ethereum, and you has growing NFTs. When NFTs come back next bull cycle, watch out. Solana is going to be it. And then also, this is just a comparison chart. Look at the seat speed, the TPS, 65,000. You know, they have something called Fire Dancer coming out. That's what jumped crypto. And if that comes out, when they tested it during the conference, they had a TPS that registered at over a million TPS. Something to think about and just, you know, do your own research. Take a look at it. Look up Fire Dancer. Do some research on it. And if that pans out, that's going to be serious. You know, not to mention they have the partnerships going on. Um, I just like Solana. I don't care what anyone else says, but I, I like it a lot. So that's what we got for Solana. The next one is Cardano, ADA. ADA, you either love it or hate it. You know, people that are Cardano fans, they're just fanatics. They believe in the project. They like Charles. They know what they're trying to do with the world. You know, try to bank the unbanked. Um, they see everything that's happening with the chain. It's a scientific, methodical. They're taking the time. They want to get it right. And for some people, that's too slow. But, you know, now they're working on side chains. And I talked about Midnight, how that's going to be with kind of privacy. And we have Hydra that's coming out that's going to help scale. Sky's the limit for Cardano. And their TVL is gaining. You know, a TVL at one point, they were outside the 20, top 20. Now they're within the top 20. Um, so I like Cardano's, what Cardano is doing. I think it's another hedge to ETH as well. And that's why I'm heavily invested and I'll be accumulating Cardano. Now, this is the Achilles heel. Right now, daily active addresses, when you compare it to other L1s, it is kind of low. I'm not going to front on that. That is low right there. So for the month of August, you had 31,000, you know, 33,000. It's got up a little bit, then back to 36,000. So that, 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 that is an issue. And daily transactions, if we look at it, just for the month of August alone, we're at 53,000, 60,000, and it goes down to 51,000, where we were looking at Solana and we're talking about millions. So that is an issue, but I'm a believer in the project. And right now, when people aren't really paying attention to it, I mean, look at the price. We're under 30 cents, 27 cents. Great time to accumulate. I don't care what anybody says. I know that come the next bull cycle at the peak, this will be at minimum its all time high, which was $3. I think it could double that to six. So I'm heavily invested in Cardano. Um, so that's what that's what we got going on there. Um, we talked about Cardano again. Some of the highlights. We have the Hydra coming up. Uh, Midnight Sign Chain. Milk Amita C1. WAN Chain. And just a lot of goodness happening. So don't sleep on Cardano. And then this one again. I saw this article. Number of Cardano whale and shark wallets surged to 16 month high. So if you see daily transactions are down compared to its peers. You see the price is under 30 cents. Some people are spreading FUD on Cardano. Why are the whales accumulating? You got to follow the smart money sometimes. They know something. They know where this thing is headed. Don't be left in the dust. So Cardano is a winner for me. Next up, we have Polygon. Polygon is my other favorite. Um, Polygon is just, the price has suffered a little bit. Um, under 60 cents, which I think is a bargain. Definitely accumulation stages. Um, and if you look at the all-time pricing chart here, um, you see at the peak, it was probably at, I want to say like $2, yeah, $2.50. And currently we're at $0.60. Cents. 
So um, what I see for Polygon, I see that they have a lot, a lot, a lot. So L2 for Ethereum, helping Ethereum scale, um, has a lot of partnerships, NFTs, DeFi, you name it. Let me show you something with the DeFi. So uh, DeFi wise, they are, bah, 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 bah. Oh, I just had it. Okay, cool. DeFi market. So TVL for DeFi, you look at Polygon, it's number five. Number five. How much TVL? 841 million TVL. Total value locked. That is impressive. That's number five. The only one on top of it will be another L2 Arbitrum, Binance, Tron, and then you have ETH. So again, they're a big player in the DeFi space. Um, also, if we look at the big partnerships that they have, and out of all the projects I'm talking about right now, they probably have the most and with the big names as well. You're looking at this uh, here. They have a, a partnership with MasterCard, Instagram, Bentley, Nike, eBay. Some of the big ones. Uh, we have Mercedes Benz, Disney, Nike. We talked about Meta, Starbucks and Reddit. I'm telling you, sky's the limit for um, Polygon. I like it. To me, it's a blue chip. It's an L2, but acts like an L1. Um, and I see the price of this one going to three at minimum and probably six or even higher, maybe even $10. I like Polygon a lot. Um, so lastly, I know I went on a little bit with this video talking about my different uh, projects that I like, but I saw this article about investing in general. And again, in the beginning of this video, I talked about having, you know, 10, 15 different projects that you like. To me, that's spreading money too thin, unless you have capital like that. But if you're a working guy like me, um, you know, your money that you have, that you have to invest, you probably want to spend it wisely. And so I want to build and get a lot heavier bags of things that I really like. And these five projects here that I've talked about, these are the ones that I'm going to be doing that with. And this article here says we all try to overthink things in life. We try to make the easy more complex because we think that if it was easy, everyone will be doing it. When it comes to your investing, do not overthink it. Simple is almost better in the long run. If you try to make your process too complex, you'll never stick to it. Or it may work once, but never again. So apply a little common sense and use these easy steps, follow and keep it simple. Now I'm going to go over all these steps, but I like some of these here. Have a plan. You can stick through it through all the markets. So ups and downs, whatever it is, you have a plan, you have your project that you like, and you just continue to DCA into them. Number two, don't speculate, invest. All the projects that I just talked about, I did my research into them and I felt comfortable investing into them. Don't invest in something because a YouTuber says it or you saw it on Twitter or whatever. A friend told you about it. Do your own research. It's your hard earned money and you want to make sure you invest in something that you truly believe in. Number three, dollar cost average is the way to go. Unless you had a silver spoon and you got money like that, the dollar cost average into your, your you know, the highs and lows and ultimately you'll come out the winner. And crypto, especially, do not try to time the market. You know, don't try to short it, long it, whatever. Crypto is so unpredictable, so volatile. You know, you just got to basically just if you follow the other three steps that we just talked about, you won't have to worry about this. So, guys, that's my video today. I went a little long, but I wanted to just have, make a quick video. It wasn't quick, but make a video to talk about how I'm thinking about this crypto space and where I want to be in position myself come 2024, 2025. Hope you liked the video. Until next time, be safe. Stay prosperous. 